Hey friend, Church D coming at you once again. Thank you for tuning in to What Does It Take to Win? Well, first I'd like to start off by saying thanks to everybody who came out last weekend to the uh, relationship panel uh, that my wife and I had the opportunity to be a part of. Uh, I just want to say it was really great. It was really powerful, I believe. Um, it was so good to the point where uh, we couldn't even get to all of the questions that were um you know, presented. That's how great it was. And then people began to sort of ask questions and we really had a chance to uh, connect with a lot of those who were there. So that was great. Um, I just want to say shout out to uh, everybody who attended. You guys are the real MVP. And of course, thanks to the host for inviting us. Uh, yeah. So hopefully there'll be a part two and uh, we can get to the rest of the questions. <laughs> hey, uh, just in case you may have forgotten, um, I did release some brand new music. It was uh, towards the beginning of August last year in 2023. It's entitled Perspective. It's a brand new EP, and I'd like you to go ahead and check that out. You can do so by clicking the link in the description. Um, also, you'll have access to all of my content by clicking the link in the description. So you'll have access to all of um, my discography, all of the music that I put out over the years, um, the private piano lessons that I do offer. It's a virtual piano course. Um, the instrumentals and the beats that are available, there's over 160 that are available right now, right this minute that you can go ahead and lease. Uh, if you want exclusive rights, you can go ahead and reach out to me and we can talk about uh, pricing for that or what the next steps would be. Uh, if you need a producer, reach out to me. Just click the link in the description and then we can uh, talk about that as well. I don't think I've missed anything, but if I did miss anything, it should be available by clicking on the link in the description. <laughs> okay. So if you have any questions, once again, just click the link in the description. Let's go ahead and jump into the topic of the hour. Um, so if you listen to last week's episode, towards the end, I briefly mentioned something about not being stuck. And, you know, the light bulb sort of just switched on in my mind. And I was like, huh, I should probably talk about not getting stuck or how to get unstuck. So the title of this week's episode is simply Don't Get Stuck. The world is constantly changing. So seasons change, fashion changes, uh, and music changes. Uh, that's actually the most noticeable changes, at least in my eyes. Uh, so pretty much whatever you can name, it's going to change at some point. It might not do a complete 180 from what it once was, but you'll notice that it's evolving. You know, even the software that I'm using currently to record this podcast, to record this very episode, it changed. Um, when I first started using it almost, what, 15 or 18 years ago, it looked a little bit different. Now it's changed. It does the same thing. It has a lot of the same functions, but there's been more that have been added. There's more that's been added to it. Um, and so, yeah, there's subtle changes as well. And just like the software I'm using will change again in the future, pretty much everything else in the world is going to change. Um, so that's why we want to make sure that we change as well for the better, of course, you know, we continue to grow uh, and not get stuck in an era. So I have three points that I'd like to focus on. The first point is to keep learning. The second point is to keep trying, but don't pressure yourself. And the third and final point, which I believe is actually most important, is to have a change of heart. OK, and I'll say that one more time. First point, keep learning. Second point, keep trying, but don't pressure yourself. And the third point, have a change of heart. So we'll start with the first point, keep learning. It's very important to keep learning within your field. People are always finding new innovative ways to make processes easier and more efficient. If you're stuck doing things, let's say the way you used to do them five to 10 years ago, uh, you might be making life a little bit more difficult for yourself. I'll give you some examples. Um, so I mentioned briefly in this intro that the software I'm using to record this podcast has changed over the years. Um, really great engineers are going into these softwares. It's called digital audio workstations. 
um, or DAWs. They go into these DAWs or software and um, they're always looking for issues within the software. So I'll receive just about every month a letter or an article, right? It's everything's virtual nowadays. And that's another change <laughs> that happened. I'll receive just about every month some sort of article saying there have been bug fixes to your software. And it will have this long list of things that I didn't even know <laughs> were an issue. You know, a lot of the stuff that I probably didn't even need to use, but there's somebody or a team of people that go in and they're just looking for any issue that might arise. And sometimes they are issues that I have and I'm like, perfect, this has been corrected. Now uh, I can get my work done much faster. And the process I was using before that would take me, let's say 10 minutes is now only taking me about three to five minutes, which is great, saving time. So that's one example. Um, another example I could give is actually in music. Um, I believe that's the most noticeable uh, art form that's changing between music and fashion, of course. Um, somehow they're tied into one another. So um, recently, yeah, I'd say fairly recently, um, it was actually towards the end of last year, I was able to be around um, somebody who I kind of looked up to growing up. Um, I remember being about 16 or 17 and I would watch this person play their instrument. This is a musician, of course. I'd watch them play their instrument and, you know, I would think to myself, wow, I like the way they're approaching these songs. You know, they put their own feel on original songs, original music, and I enjoyed the way they played it. You know, I thought they were the boss. They were at boss level <laughs> of uh, playing their instrument. So this is when I was around 16, 17. Uh, this is almost 20 years ago. And um, so we fast forward uh, to now, present day. I happen to see them again. And they were doing all of the same stuff they were doing almost 20 years ago on their instrument. And <laughs> some people who um, they had not seen me in a while, they came up to me. They were just like, hey, um, so do you want to take over here? Because this person, you know what they're doing, it's just it's bad. <laughs> and I listened to them and I was saying to myself, wow, um, what he's doing on his instrument isn't necessarily bad, but he's unfortunately stuck in an era where at that time it was really cool, but he just stopped growing. He, he didn't continue learning the new stuff and he, he stopped evolving. And so what was once cool almost 20 years ago, now it doesn't sound good. And don't get me wrong. Um, I'll say it again. He's phenomenal. Hmm. Maybe not phenomenal. <laughs> He's really good at uh, his instrument. But um, again, what he was doing almost 20 years ago and trying to do it again now, it's just not as cool. Um, if he was able to sort of evolve, but sort of keep some of his originality with him while still playing the newer stuff, then I believe that would sound a bit cooler. It brings me to another example. Um, this is an artist and this person, they, you know, they were known for being very strict, running their rehearsals and getting their music together and sort of being very hard on the bands. Um, I remember hearing a story about how rehearsal would be stopped if the band, if anybody in the band missed one note or, you know, just made a human error right? Like this was the type of perfection this artist demanded. And, you know, they never quite got their big break. Unfortunately, they required all of this perfection. You couldn't make any mistakes. You couldn't be human <laughs> in your craft. Um, and that's another part with art as well. So like, let's say you're a musician or you're an artist or anything of that sort. You still need to be able to be human in order to get your best work out of, you know, out of you. Here's a little sidebar. Um, when you're practicing, like especially on an instrument, during your practice time, it's okay to make mistakes. Um, sometimes when you make mistakes, you might open up and hear something different. It'll open up your mind. And you'll hear something different that might be cool that you can try, that you can apply to your playing. So that's a little sidebar. 
But um, back to this artist that um, was very strict and running these strict rehearsals. So yeah, they they ran these very strict rehearsals. You had to pretty much be a computer where they would load the information into you and you just have to spit it right back out at this artist. Well, like I said, they never really got their big break. Um, they ended up getting fired from their gig and had to move out of state, pretty much chasing other gigs. And till this day, this has been almost 30 years, they still have yet to make their big break. At this stage in their life, um, you know, they're old. <laughs> you know, I, no disrespect, and there's nothing wrong with being old, but they're old. And usually once you reach the stage, it's time to retire. Like they're at the retirement age, still trying to get their big break, you know, and that's painful. Why is that? Because they got stuck. They got stuck in that era. They never evolved. Um, there was an artist that came right after them that ended up filling their position, right? The very same position. This artist, um, they were ahead of their time. So things that were cool, let's say 20 years ago, this artist, they weren't doing that. They were doing what everybody's doing now, uh, musically. And back then, a lot of people didn't quite understand it, um, but they didn't shy away from it. Um, the audience uh, who I'm talking about, the audience didn't shy away from the music that was being presented by this artist, but um, they didn't quite understand it. So then you fast forward 10 years. Now there's a bug in their ear and they're like, oh, okay, I kind of like this a little bit more, but I don't really understand it. 15 years. Oh, I'm starting to like it. And now 20 years in advance, it's the hottest thing that's going around and everybody's doing it. And that's because this artist wanted to sort of be in the future, not get stuck and try to keep evolving. Okay. So I know that sounded like a mouthful, but um, I just had to give those examples because I felt as though it would help somebody uh, if it was a musician or even if it's a non-musician, if it's somebody who's into developing software, if you own any type of company that's not even related to art, just don't get stuck. Always find an innovative way to do something. So that was a mouthful <laughs> for uh, point number one to keep learning. Let's move on to point number two, which is keep trying, but don't pressure yourself. Now, maybe you're in a season of your life where you feel like you've hit a brick wall. Um, there are some things that you wanted to reach, some goals that you want to reach by a certain age, uh, but it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, my advice to you is to just keep trying, uh, but don't pressure yourself to reach those goals, maybe even reshape and like realign your goals. So as I mentioned, uh, when I was talking about the first point with the uh, artist who had reached retirement age and they didn't quite get their break, I would say at this point, you know, sort of realign your goals. Maybe you wanted to be that big time artist that's going to sell out stadiums and do all these big time tours. Well, now you're reaching retirement age, maybe realign and say, OK, I'll start by helping to develop young artists so they can reach these stadium tours or I'll get into artist management, artist coaching, whatever it may be. You could still be a part of, um, you know, you could. Yeah, you could still incorporate your dream as a part of your goals. Um, but you don't necessarily have to chase the same goals. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'll try to reword that a little bit differently. So in other words, your dream isn't necessarily dead. Um, you just have to find a different way to get your dream to come to reality, to make your dream reality. OK, hopefully that helps somebody. <laughs> but as I mentioned, yes, don't put pressure on yourself. Um, you know, you don't have to put pressure on yourself to reach those goals, whether it's like, you know, a career or being a homeowner, marriage, children, reaching a certain dollar amount um, for your money, etc. Whatever it is, don't pressure yourself. Like I could talk about myself. Um, I remember being a lot younger and I put pressure on myself to reach a certain point in my career as an entrepreneur. And, you know, I would look around at my peers and I'm just like, OK, how come they're able to do it and I can't do it? Why is it happening so fast for them, but not happening as fast for me? Um, but I just had to go through a season of like really preparing and getting good at what I did. And eventually I reached my goals. You know, I'm able to see the fruit of my labor. Um, you know, I could talk about my career. I wanted to be a touring musician. I wanted to make beats for a living. Um, I wanted to do all things music. It took me years of just simply grinding it out, taking jobs that I didn't even like, <laughs> doing a lot of, um, you know, 
musical gigs that I wasn't a fan of that were even unpaid. Um, but I was able to get to where I am at at this point. And I know there's even greater like ahead for me. Um, I also remember wanting being a little bit younger and saying, OK, you know, I need to uh, get my own place and all this good stuff. How is this going to happen? When am I going to do it, et cetera? My older siblings moved out and I was the last one at home. I'm just like, man, here I am stuck. This is <laughs> it's not feeling good. You know, what am I going to do? So, of course, I prayed about it and I just, you know, moved my feet. You know, I, I started to work on the necessary steps that I needed to take in order to get my own place. And I was able to do that. Um, even marriage, too. I, I had given up on that at one point. I was just like, I don't know if this is going to work out for me. I know I want to be married. You know, I'm saying it in my heart that I'd like to uh, have a wife and some children, you know, one day. But how is this going to work? So um, but again, you know, I just I worked towards it. I worked on myself, of course. And um, like I just said, I, I said in my heart that I can do it. It's attainable and it's going to happen someday. And here I am, you know, not too long later, not too far after. I have everything that I said in my heart that I would like to have, and which is actually a good segue to the third and final point, which is to have a change of heart. I believe this is the most powerful way to not be stuck. OK, when you change your heart, something happens on the outside as well. Whatever is in your heart is what you'll eventually pursue. Um, and also, believe it or not, it'll find a way to you whatever's in your heart relationship panel let's talk about that so this past weekend um while doing the relationship panel with my wife i was reminded of what i said in my heart right before actually meeting her and marrying her um and then she told me what she said in her heart and it's interesting how um around the same time we said the same thing before we had even met one another um, I can actually go into more detail with that uh, if you reach out to me and, you know, just or if you were at the relationship panel, you have a better idea of where I'm going with this. Um, but pretty much what happened was there was a change of heart on both sides. So I changed my heart, you know, and she changed hers for a while. As I just mentioned, there was unbelief in my heart that, OK, this is not attainable, um, you know, everything that you see on TV, on social media, here on the radio, read in storybooks. It's simply not true. It's just a fictional story that could happen, but is not likely to happen. And um, that was sort of the way I was believing for a while. But it wasn't until that one day that I changed my heart um, about love uh, and just love found me, you know, and I found love. Uh, to back up a little bit, the same thing happened as well with my journey and my career. I changed my heart about it. Um, you know, people would come and fill me with negative words concerning being able to make a living in my field or doing entrepreneurship, telling you how much you're going to fail and how much you're going to be depressed and how much it's going to hurt, etc. But I changed my heart and I said, OK, you know what? Sure, this might happen a few times, but it's going to get a lot better faster. It's going to get better sooner than I think. And surely it did. So all in all, change your heart and just watch how things around you will change. You'll you'll begin to move differently and, you know, begin to attract exactly what it is you want and what you deserve. And that, my friends, is the third and final point. So let's do a quick recap. The first point is to keep learning. It's very important to keep learning within your field. There's always somebody trying to find a new and innovative way to make the process easier. Keep trying, but don't pressure yourself. You might be in a season where you feel like you've hit a brick wall, but don't worry about it. Don't pressure yourself. You're going to break through. And the third and final point, have a change of heart. This is the most powerful way to not be stuck. When you change your heart, something happens on the outside as well. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope it blessed you and I hope it encouraged you. 
Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to share this. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with people you don't even like. Share it with that person who keeps bothering you for advice. I got you covered. Um, and lastly, if you'd like to connect with me, just click the link in the description for all of my content. I have some great things in store for you. Thanks for tuning in. God bless.